Good evening. We call to order our uh, regular meeting the West Valley City Council. We note that uh, the council as a quorum, one member is excused tonight, Councilman Steve Vinson, and uh, he will not be with us. We will begin with a opening ceremony. We turn to Councilman Bueller for that. Thank you, Mayor. It's good to see so many of you here tonight, here and uh, involved with us. Um, when we were all elected, we were then uh, sworn into office and swore an oath to protect and support the Constitution of this state and the Constitution of the United States. And I bring that up only to uh, remind us, remind you, that this is serious business, and uh, it goes to the core of our basic beliefs in uh, democracy and in representative government. And we often pledge allegiance to the flag, and I'm going to ask that we stand and pledge allegiance to the flag and keep in mind our responsibilities as elected officials, our responsibilities as city employees, our responsibilities as citizens of this country and residents of this city with respect to each other, with respect to property rights, with respect to liberties and opportunities that we have living in this great country. So please stand and repeat the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have some scout troops here, but it doesn't look like there are any tonight, so we'll skip having them come up. Unless there's, I see some young ladies. I don't think there are any Girl Scouts here, groups. So, okay. And yes, Girl Scouts can come and be recognized too. Uh, next on our agenda, we have our minutes of July 25th from two weeks ago, the last time we met, to the council then for a motion on the minutes. Move for approval of the minutes of July 25th. 2017. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The minutes are approved. Uh, next on our agenda, we have our Employee of the Month Award. And I'm trying, I, okay, there it is. Can remember who we had had, had that uh, opportunity. We'll turn to Councilman Hume for that. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it very much. Um, he is a Chiu Oliva court clerk and nominated by uh, Nicole Dunway, Karen Nelson, Maria uh, Alvador, Stephanie Babaika, uh, <laughs> Santa Bangader. And um, Chiu, are you here? Please just stand up and. Uh, Thank you. I will read this and very, very quick too. Um, <clears throat> many of us at the court are proud to nominate Jill for her exceptional work, ethics, knowledge, and feminist. Jill has been in the court since November of 2008. All of us have gotten to know her very well. We have never come to work without a happy hello and a single and a smile on her face. She is the type of person that just makes your day by being herself. She was the first chair in the court to the judge view more. This is very this is a very stressful position at times. To views with angry defendants, inmates attorneys, and loads of paperwork. She goes be above and beyond during court and outside of court to ensure the court runs smoothly. It would be hard for many of us to keep up with the amount of work she does and she does it with a smile. It is not hard to, to see that she loves what she does, she is always willing to answer any questions and help her co-workers with anything they need. 
recently, the court was being audited by the FBI. The success of the court was a place on her ability to perform her duties correctly according to the government guidelines. Jews just pass their expectations and pass with fine colors. She scored hundred percent of she scored hundred percent on the audit. The FBI was impressed with her knowledge and the court skills. At the end of the audit, the FBI agent shook her hand, took Jill's hand, and congratulated her on a job well done. Jill is definitely one of a kind, and we need more like her. Thank you. Now, uh, Jill, if you don't mind, if you have any uh, family members or co-workers with you today, can you uh, say or introduce them to us? Or have or have them stand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please stand up. Okay. Welcome tonight, and we do appreciate your here being here to support her. So. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you're welcome all to stay, but uh, typically in our council meetings, people come and go. Uh, not council members, but everybody else. So, uh, everyone's welcome. We next have on our agenda our public comment period. Now, I believe a number of you here are here to speak on either the, if you are here to speak on the issue of the uh, Planning Commission's denial of the zoning change to agricultural, uh, then we'll have a separate hearing in a few minutes. If you, if I read your name, just say I'll do it in a few minutes. And what? Yeah, I'm getting to that. And the second one is the budget that the city has proposed. We will be adopting our final budget tonight. And as some of you may know, there is a proposed property tax increase on that. So if you're here to speak on those two issues, again, just indicate if you signed up on this list, we'll still give you an opportunity to speak, but we'll do it separately. We want it focused on those two. That's an actual public hearing that anyone can speak, even if they didn't sign up. These are more for the other items that aren't on the agenda. We give the public an opportunity to speak even if it's not on our agenda. We can't do anything on our part that's not on the agenda, but the public can do what they would like. So, public comment period. No person can speak for more than five minutes. Direct your comments to me as the chair. Uh, it is not a debate time. Uh, it's not a time for, you can raise questions, just don't expect an immediate answer. Those may come later or a discussion may take place after. So use your time as you deem appropriate. All right. Then let's begin with our list here. We have, and I will do the best I can, but if I get it wrong, that's okay. You correct it when you get up to the microphone. Let's see, Bud Shosted, and you're not here on the budget or the agricultural issue. Great. I live on 3366 West, 4400 South, 
known by my neighbors up there is uh, Robert Frost Speedway. It's, uh, we have the school zones up there, but nobody enforces it. We've got blinking lights, and uh, people drive by there and try to go faster than they did the last time. So one day, one of our school, one of our school children is going to get hit. And uh, I, this isn't the first time I've talked about this stuff. But, uh, we get them blinking lights, the hose across the road, but we don't. We used to have a, a patrolman occasionally come up there and, and check things out and, and take care of business. But we don't have that luxury anymore. In our neighborhood, the one I live in, Warden Hop, Warden Heights up there, is a pretty decent neighborhood. But we all work real hard in that neighborhood to make things the way it is. But uh, I don't think you guys, as a council and city manager over there, are doing your part to do what you're supposed to do and helping us do what we like to do. We spend a lot of money in our, in our yards and our homes, but the neighbor next door, they can let his grass grow that high, nothing happens. It, it, it's a terrible thing, and I think we're getting some really poor representation. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to see you, when you walked around, when you were running for uh, office, you, you covered the whole area. I'd like you to walk again and see what, you, what you're seeing now. It's different. We got, it, it's terrible. Homes are going to junk. You know, we, uh, a few years ago, we hired, uh, or you claimed you hired, a bunch of uh, code enforcement people that you could drive around and, and make sure that all the ordinances were taken care of. We're on it. If, if we have a problem with our neighbor, we have to squeal on that neighbor to get it done. So where's the code, code enforcement people? You guys aren't doing your job. Another thing in our, in our neighborhood, and yesterday, the city guys are out there painting the cracks in the cement yellow paint. I asked him, I said, what are you doing? You going to grind that? And he said, no, that's a tripping hazard. We're going to do that in the whole city. Well, that's about as tacky as you can get. That's, that's not even acceptable. Exactly. Now, there's a home down on 3622 West, 4305 South. That the, it's a health hazard. It, you guys don't do nothing about it. Nobody even probably knows it's there. I, I don't understand what your jobs are. You say what your jobs are, but I don't understand if you've got a job. You know, you guys, we, we talk, that's all we want is some help from the city. Do, do what you say you, was, you want to do. Get out and see what's going on, especially you. See what's happening out there. You don't know, you don't know nothing about what's going on in our city. You get there and get a high price for your, your salary, earn it. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Next we have Roger Chase. And uh, is that true of Becky Chase too? Yes, I'm okay. A okay. Barry Farrar? No new taxes. Okay. Stephen Ross? Taxes. Uh, Ken Thora? No need change. Okay. Benj Benjamin Agor? <coughs> Zoni? Yeah. Okay. John Sanders? Zoni and taxes. Okay, Sharon Davis. Okay, Jessica Hepworth. All right. Uh, Shalina. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Ooh, I think it's Eugene Thornton. Yes. Okay. Very good. Mine will be real brief. And it's mostly directed towards uh, Tom. 
as this is his part of the city. But I just wanted to remind all of you that uh, we have that uh, homeless shelter hanging over our head. And I just wanted to make sure, and I'll continue to come here to remind you that uh, we need to address that. We need to try and get an individual on the board, the homeless board. I don't know if that has happened yet or not. But uh, we need to take that seriously. It's going to affect the city, even though it's not in the city proper. The half of the circle <coughs> and the influence of that uh, site over there is going to affect the southeast corner of the city. So I just wanted to remind you on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, Lynn Coulomb. Agriculture. Okay, thank you. And I assume Robin is the same. Okay. Uh, Mark Thorup. Zoning. Zoning. Uh, Aaron Ford. Yes, agriculture and zoning. Okay. And Jesse Campbell. Zoning. Okay. Was there anyone else here to use the public comment period for any other items? Okay, then we'll proceed down. Oh, there's one there. didn't get added, but it's John Rudd for zoning as well. Oh, okay. Well, it'll be open for even if your name's not on the list. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, the public generic comment, is that a good way to say it, is uh, closed. Uh, any comments from our city manager? No, thanks, man. Okay, thank you. Comments from the council? I think just quickly I'd uh, say, by the way, one gentleman, yeah, I'm out walking again. I don't know if I'll make, I won't make it through all the neighborhoods, but I'm sure trying. Uh, and wouldn't mind visiting with you a little bit afterwards. Homeless shelter, yes, the city is still very involved in that issue. Uh, I don't know about our getting a seat, but I do know that regardless of that, our staff has been significantly involved in the process and will continue to do so in the future. With that then, and seeing no further comments from the council, uh, we'll now go to our public hearings. Our uh, first one is regarding application Z-4-2017 filed by Roger Chase. This is to appeal the denial of the planning commission regarding a change from R1A to agricultural. Uh, and this is for property located at 3396 West, 3100 South. And so that is the issue before us. Uh, this is in conjunction as well with Ordinance 17-28. The application and the ordinance have two different numbers. So uh, with that introduction then, there are a number of you who are here to speak. Uh, I guess we could go down this list. Yes. I'm here, yeah, if I could just interject. I think it might be helpful to have Ms. Nab, who is kind of the staff expert on this particular issue, come and just illustrate for general knowledge of everybody. Okay. Summarize the, the status of the situation, what's happened heretofore. I'd like her to also illustrate what the options are going forward, pathwise, both so you're informed of that for your decision, without the applicant, and as well as any of the public that are here. Okay, that'll be fine. And Ms. Oh, there she is. She, I've been looking all over for you. It's hard when there's a lot of you here. Okay, so I am Jody Knapp, and I am with Planning and Zoning with West Valley City. Um, just to summarize the application, so the original request was to rezone the property from R18 to Agricultural. The property is about 2.3 acres, and again, it's at 3396 West, 3100 South. The surrounding zones are R18, R16, and then there's some Agricultural to the east. Um, the current so again, the current zoning on the property is R18. Our zoning maps from 1985 indicate that the zoning has been in place since that time. In 2016, Mr. Chase was given approval for a seven lot subdivision 
And that was, again, with the single family zoning in the R18 zone. It was called Chase Meadows. Um, after Mr. Chase started cleaning up the property and just um, got into developing that, he decided he no longer wanted to develop it for homes and wanted to live on the property himself and keep his personal animals there. He had initially expressed some interest in boarding animals, having a petting zoo, hay rides, and a Christmas tree lot. He had also set up a website and had looked at possibly leasing out the home. Um, but when he learned of the city requirements, he decided he didn't want to do that anymore and have the public come to the property. And again, he just wanted to live in the home. So he decided to not pursue that, that avenue. And he has subsequently taken down the website. Um, just with a little bit of the history, so again, the zoning is R18. And so what that means is you can have a single family residential home and household pets. Um, like dogs or cats or up to four chickens. And um, the, there are some agricultural remnants on the property. There is a large barn structure that you can see in aerial photographs from about 1979. So with the current zoning, again, wouldn't have the animal rights. And so Mr. Chase is requesting to rezone the property to agricultural. With that zoning, you're allowed 200 animal points per acre. So with the 2.3 acres, he could have 460 animal points. And the, the pens or any place the animals are kept, they are required to be at least 40 feet from any dwelling. Then on the flip side of that, um, we have discussed with Mr. Chase applying for an animal rights determination through the Board of Adjustment. And again, with the evidence showing the old barn structures and just historical aerial photography, there is some evidence that animals have been on the property, even though it hasn't been zoned agricultural. Um, he, again, at this time, he just decided not to go to the Board of Adjustment and request the non-conforming determination and just went right for the rezone. Um, I think that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So if you have more questions. I have one question for you, mm -hmm. uh, Joby. Uh, thank you for, uh, you know, uh, bringing it up, um, <coughs> spending your time to uh, basically to give us a little bit of background about this uh, property. Um, any complaining um, people nearby there or is uh, residents nearby there? Is, send a letter to the gentleman or they send a letter to our city about this situation in that that area, I mean that's a property. Yes, we have received some complaints. Okay. Um, some of it was due to the, the points or how many animals were on the property and just the proximity to the adjacent residential property. So a petition was submitted and that is included in your packet. So there's a letter that was submitted as well as photographs, and I believe there are about 23 signatures on that petition. Thank you. Question. Um, you know, during the process of all this, I saw a, a report or uh, some information that there were many more animals on the property than would be allowed, even if it had been agricultural. But uh, my question is, if it were agricultural now, have those animals been reduced so that it would be in compliance with an agricultural zone? Yes. Our animal control office has been out to the site, and they took a record of the animals that were there. And so at the time they went out to do the inspection, he was within the, the allowed points in the agricultural zone. And then looking forward, I just want confirmation, that as, as I understand it, this is rezoned to agricultural, then our ordinances would prohibit it, uh, an application to rezone it again, maybe when this owner moves on to R1A, it would have to be, the only application that would be accepted would be for the RE, or residential estate zone, is that correct? Correct, due to the size of the property, he would only be eligible for the RE. <coughs>
So our residential estate zone is a single family zone that is a 12,000 square foot lot minimum with a 15,000 square foot average. And an R18 is 8,000 square foot minimum. And agriculture is a half acre minimum. Mr. Pyle? Mayor, if there aren't any other questions from the council, I just wanted to see if I could clarify and summarize real quickly. Not so much for your benefit, because I know you as the council understands, but for the public's benefit, the choice is before the council. So if the council upholds the planning commission's denial, then the zoning will stay in place, and Mr. Chase would then be required to remove the animals uh, that are there or maybe were there and not bring them back. Is that correct? Correct, or apply for the non-conforming determination. Right. That would be his then recourse or next step option if he chose to do that. Mm -hmm. If the council overturns the denial, then he would what in terms of continuing on with the, the rezone application that would then be approved or what happens then? Yes, I believe if they overturn the denial, then the, the rezone would take place. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear for everybody hearing. Thanks, Mayor. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much, Julia. So now we will declare open the public hearing portion on this particular issue. Uh, and I guess I'll just use this as kind of a guide. This is not an exclusive <coughs> list. If you're not on here and want to make a comment, we will still try to accommodate that. So let's begin with Roger Chase. So originally I was buying the property to turn it into a subdivision. Everybody thinks that I turned it to R8. I did not. I bought it originally because <coughs> It was R8, and I want to turn it into a subdivision, fix it up. I <clears throat> was cleaning up the property. It was kind of a mess. There was five horses. There's a five-horse stall. There's all kinds of barns and things, and I actually come from a farming background. So then, <clears throat> as I was cleaning it up, I paid $13,000 to get it approved for a subdivision and fell in love with the place and had a dream of having a pumpkin patch. So I went down to West Valley and they said I could have a pumpkin patch. So we did have a pumpkin patch and we had a pet and zoo and we did pony rides and horse rides and the kids his faces were amazing and, you know, I've been a general contractor my whole life and made some pretty good money in my day, worked pretty hard. But seeing a place in West Valley where kids can come and see a pony ride or see pet a llama or pet a miniature pony and see their eyes glow is pretty good. Telling. It's worth more than all that tea in China, as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, I know you guys are supposedly saying you like open spaces. So to the west of us is all agriculture. You know, and then they're all turning it back into subdivisions. They already got it sold, they're doing that. Okay, well, yeah, I made a few mistakes. Joni's been working with me, and I've been trying to come within everything. I had too many animals. I actually had animals coming here. I got a little place in Green River here where it's a ranch, and I had a bunch of animals. Well, I made the neighbor pretty mad at me, and I did some wrong things, and I made Joni <coughs> mad because I had signs up and did things, which I'm not the brightest person in the world. So, but I've been trying to come in appliance. As soon as I found out what I needed to do, I got rid of the animals, and I'm way below compliance right now. I've tried to clean everything up, fix all the pens, try to come in with compliance, and right now, 
we got to get bathrooms and all this stuff and you know it ain't about money if it was money i should have just sold it as lots and right now it would have been little lots i had builders wanting to buy it i fell in love with the place my family fell in love with the place my grandkids love the place and it's an open space and i want to take care be a partner with west valley and make it a fun place we've got boy scout guys coming doing merit badges and doing projects there i have a lot of people that are behind me and everything else and i know you know it's a work in progress i'm not the smartest guy in the world i've had a few animals get loose but i've tried to take care of it i try to take care of anybody's concerns the bottom line is, is you know, you guys spend a lot of time trying to make a city better. Well, do we need a whole bunch of more subdivisions? Or do you want open spaces? It's like Wheeler Farm. It's miniature. But people have fun. And someday I'd like to have a pumpkin patch. Someday I'd like to have a Christmas tree lot. I'm working with Joni, and I'm trying to come into compliance. And I'm not, I'm not a perfect person. But I am trying to work it, but the bottom line is, hey, if I was trying to make money at it, I've been making money and developing lots my whole life. I just love it, and my grandkids love it. We like to have hay rides, and kind of let people remember the good old days when people worked hard, and being able to gather eggs and understand where things come from, not this new phony world we live in, where, you know, this new world is all about our kids sitting there with their laptops and their Nintendos. Like me, I try to get my grandkids out riding the horse, doing horseback riding, getting back to the real world. You know, this new world, I think it's phony. That's just my opinion. Build a whole bunch of more civ divisions, get a whole bunch of cars on the road where we don't have roads to take care of it. I think that you've lost, we've lost our way. You know, when the depression came, you know, you think everything's going to go good the rest of our life here. We get one nuclear bomb. Hey, in the depression, you went back to the farm. Where are you guys going to go now? One week, you'll be starving to death because nobody knows anything about farming or doing anything right. Anyway, I ain't doing this for the money, but I'm doing it for the kids and families. And I know you guys got grandkids or kids. When you want to bring them over there and have a petting zoo, buy a pumpkin in West Valley, or do you want to go all the way to somewhere else? Anyway. If you guys got any questions, I would like to answer them. Thank you very much. Okay. Next is Becky Chase. If you would, uh, excuse me, if you would hold your applause, you're going to use your time up, and they're all, they'll be here all night. So, if you want to do that, use the old Boy Scout. Give them a hand or something, something quiet, okay? Because okay. we record all this. Okay, my name is Becky Chase. I do live at 3396 West, 3100 South, West Valley City, Utah, 84119. First of all, I'd like to thank, there's about 48 people here that is supporting us, and I would like to thank them for coming and supporting us. Okay, I am for the rezoning. Um, I'm married to Roger Chase. My husband is, has a big dream. He loves animals, and he loves to see children smile. And to have his, he would like to have his, he would love to have a small farm for his grandchildren to come and play and to learn. We've been working very hard in making improvements on this property. I have pictures of my property that I would like you to look at if you wouldn't mind. For 
for you all to see. We've taken lots of loads of garbage off the property, put up new fencing, which you can see all over. We're still working on it. We put new pens for chickens and fixed up the horse stalls. In the first photo, you can see that we are not right on 3100 South. We are about 120 feet in. We go down a little, like a little lane, or a, I don't know what it's called. Um, and then there's a gate, a very solid gate, as you can see there. And then about, um, then the barns are another 600 feet back from the, from 3100 South, from the entrance. We all, we, we, me and my husband have gone around and talked to all the neighbors around us. We've asked them to sign a petition that if they wanted open spaces and they don't have a problem, and if, that they don't have a problem with anything on our property. We have gotten 168, which at least 28 of them are close neighbors and are touching my property. I have highlighted them in yellow. And the yellow ones are the neighbors that are touching my property or very close. While I was doing this, I got two complaints from neighbors on the east side of me, which are here. And their complaints to me were about the flies and the rabbits. So we bought a great big um, fogger to get rid of the flies, and that is working very well and taking care of them. And all the rabbits are gone off of the property now. I have three plats on there that show our land. There is a lot of open land to the west of us. There are a few neighbors that touch our land that has chicken and animals on them too. I've marked them in the orange so you can see how they are gent to my property. There has been animals on this land for years. You can clearly see it because of all the barns and stables have been on the properties for years. There are apartments and multi-dwelling homes, commercial and agriculture all around us. It is nice to have some open spaces left open in West Valley City. We are clearly not doing this for a profit, but for the enjoyment and living out a dream and for hard work. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next we have... Uh, oh, I have, excuse me, oh. sorry, one more thing to say. Oh. When we did have the pumpkin patch there, we did have people that came by and signed <coughs> a petition too. There are over 775 signatures on this one of them signing this. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Barry Farr. Very fair. Fair, sorry. 4059 South Stillwater Way. Um, I'd like to make it a free for all. Taxes, the homeless shelter, and zoning. I come and talk to you guys several times about zoning. Letting us be adults. Some people can't handle one dog, one horse, one nothing. Some people can handle a whole farm. And you guys won't let us have our property rights. And I, I think he deserves to have to have his property and do what he wants with it. And, and if he's out of compliance and he gets an excessive amount of complaints, then you guys can go do your job. And that's, I found it really interesting when the homeless shelter issue came up, you guys got all, all worked up and we're not going to let them tell us what to do in our city, but yet you do the same thing to us. I thought that was funny, that, that, that they were doing the same thing to you, but you, it's so ironic you don't even see it. And as far as taxes go, we've got two golf courses, we've got a rec center, the Hale Center, the E Center, RSD, the a development arm of West Valley that's competing with business, all luxury stuff, and then you want to ask for new taxes? Wrong! Wrong! It's called cut back. If the child wants a trampoline and you've got bills, the, tribal, the child plays with the dog, not gets a trampoline. And there's no new taxes. Wrong! That's the easiest fix, always. New taxes cut back and sell off the stuff that we shouldn't even be involved in. 
Okay, thank you very much. Next is Stephen Ross. No, Stephen Ross. Ken Thorne. There we are. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. It's always a pleasure to be here to see the city in action, what you do for a living and what, how you take care of us. The last time I was at this stand, I talked to the Planning and Zoning Commission with seven members present, and Jody and Nicole, and we discussed what was going on on the property at length. You've all had packets, you've all seen the pictures, you all have read my reports, you've seen the signatures on there from every neighbor that abuts the property. Not one of them denied signing the petition to not zone this back to agriculture. Mr. Chase, upon hearing I was opposed to this, called me 25 times the night, night after he found I was opposing this in the middle of the night with harassing phone calls, and then again in the morning, and then that afternoon, he chucked over my wall all kinds of steel fence poles, clawed board, boxes, you name it, and his dear wife, after the police came, had to come and clean it all up. I think his last court date on that was today at 1.30. This is the kind of a person we're dealing with. I went over, I'm the water master, I went over to give them a key to the, to the weir down on 3600 and 3100. And I did a rough count on the animals that I saw. I came up with 3,480 points, which was short. I didn't realize he had peacocks flying all over the neighborhood. I didn't realize he had a herd of pot belly pigs, besides the herds of pigs that he had. The neighbor told me at one time, he suggested to him that he had 80 pigs on site, which I don't doubt. And the other reason I went over was to have him move a big herd of pigs away from my property line, right against my bedroom window. Has no respect or anything for any neighbor around but Roger Chase. You know, in West Valley City, in the valley, the wind blows. Two directions, basically. In the morning, it blows from the south. You notice all the jets taking off to the south. In the evening, the wind blows from the north. All the jets land to the north. All the manure smell comes from the south, hits every one of those neighbors right next to them. I mean, he's right against their vinyl fence yards with his animals. You've seen the pictures. I hope you've seen the pictures. If you haven't, you need to get my packet out. Can't even open their bedroom window. Can't open your kitchen window in the morning to get some fresh air. This has been going on for over two years. Flies are just horrendous. They're on everything all the time. Can't even use my patio and barbecue area five feet away from my wall because I've got brain mules standing in poop over there a foot deep. His buffalo, at the time I did the count, they were in crap inside of a corral, clear up to their chest. Animal control? I called animal control. Did they get down there? They couldn't, because Roger Chase would not allow it. He says, you can come down next Thursday at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, he started trucking pigs to Green River and animals over to the neighbor's yard, which he leases off of Spencer, the property right to the east. So he could probably come into compliance, which when they went down and counted, he wasn't in compliance. This guy uh, had a website. You see, you've seen his website, haven't you? You've seen the website that Mr. Chase had? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the Triple R Ranch in the city. Come and make your next convention. Hay rides, pony rides. Automobile rentals, car repairs, you name it. Just the page on horse stall rentals is 14 pages when you open up that link. This is the guy that never approached the city to get a license to see if it was okay. He just goes and does. Puts big blow up signs, that, uh, the kind you see at car lots out in the front of his yard trying to sell pumpkins, Christmas trees, whatever. 
That's what you have to deal with. Yes, I love animals. I've had them all run around them all my life. I come from ranch people. But this is not 1917, it's 2017. The land is short, the land is scarce in West Valley City. Right up 4400 West, there's a piece of property, the old Grant, Short Grant lives on it there. There's probably two and a half acres right there. Just assume that you're Short Grant, and some guy comes in and buys the property. All came from you, gives you 400 and some thousand dollars like this sale was. And you're the neighbors, three sides. All of a sudden, in your sheds back there that you had your construction equipment in, most of the sheds on this property had farm equipment in them. And then Ralph Montrone, that I grew up and played with since he was three years old, he built the first buildings in there for Western Sheet Metal, now one of the largest sheet metal HVAC companies in the state. That's where he started. That's why they're there. That's why Mr. Chase got a permit to put a gas line in there and put heaters in there, because he leased it out for an automobile shop repair. That's what they were for. In the 1960s, I allowed Ralph Montrone to have one horse. His sister from Chicago bought this Appaloosa, gorgeous thing you ever saw in your life. She says, Kenny, can I put the horse on there? I said, yeah. Everything was open. Jump on your horse and ride anywhere you want back in the day. But that's what those sheds are for. Ralph used to farm all of that. That's where their cash crops were. There were never animals there. They always lived on the down east slope of the Ridgeline Canal, which comes right along the school, goes across the road still. There's a hill right there and heads on down to the north. But anyway, that's about where they're at. Mr. Chase's appeal letter says, I want to have a community entity in West Valley City that people can come and enjoy and, you know, I'm going to plant this and harvest fruit and all this stuff. The only trees I've seen him plant lately are more three to four foot diameter dead trees with all the bark peeled off that have a five yard concrete base around them to hold them up and they're 30 feet tall. I don't know what you harvest off of those. There's not enough land in there to raise any crops. His pumpkin patch is about the size of this room. He supposedly bought some super Jack in the Beanstalk giant pumpkin seeds this year. I don't know what he's going to do with those. But that's where we're at. Just stop and think. If you were me, how would you vote? To have a guy like this move in, change his mind 14 times, bring all this animal stuff in. If I may use a little off-color language, how would you like to go over and visit him and or just uh, have the odors coming where you got mule crap, horse crap, cow crap, chicken crap, pig crap, duck crap, peacock crap, buffalo crap, llama crap, all mixed together floating into your... I was going to take and hang my shirt out over the wall there and then wear it tonight and come up and shake your hand so you could get a little whiff of what's really going on. It's great to have animals. He's born 100 years too late in the wrong place. He should have moved out towards Magna, below 21st South, where there's still a little open land and people do this kind of stuff. So that's about where we're at, City Council. If you give this guy the, uh, the right to start this nightmare all over again, we're going to be right in court. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Benjamin. Oh, one other thing may I, add, may I inject, Mayor, I forgot to ask this. Thank you very much. I assume that only those people that uh, received a letter and live within a certain amount of feet from this property have the ability to speak about it or opportunity. <coughs> Public hearing is open. Okay. Public hearing is open to all who want to speak. Benjamin Agor. Okay, thank you. Hi, Mayor and Council. So I'm one of the, um, so I live on uh, 3013 Aspen Circle. I think Tom, you're the councilman. Um, I'm one of the unfortunate um, neighbors that live you know, very close to Mr. Chase's property. Um, you know, just to add to what Mr. Thorup said, 
you know, we can, you know, in, in my cold side, there's three houses on sale now, is trying to move out because of, you know, just the, you know, just the animal smell um, from our properties. We can't even use our backyards um, anymore because, because of the flies and because of the, of the, of the smell. I've called the city twice because I've had two goats in my yard. Um, and I think, you know, I'm just urging the council to uphold, you know, their previous decision not to rezone, you know, uh, the, the property there as agriculture. <laughs> Um, you know, part of the problem is that maybe Mr. Chase, um, you know, wants to have a place for his grandkids to pet llamas and, you know, goats. And, you know, we are also trying to raise kids, um, you know, in, on, on our properties. I've lived there since 2008, haven't had any problems. When I moved there, there were maybe a handful of horses, and now it's just countless animals there. And like I said, we can't even use our backyards anymore. So I'm just urging the council to uphold the previous decision, not to resolve the place. Thanks. Thank you. Next is John Sanders. Thank you. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm, uh, I come here to kind of talk to Roger. Uh, I think you, you know where I live down in Chesterfield. Everybody knows John. But anyway, I think Roger come down here just, ah, man, I got me a farm. This is the place I'm going to do this. He didn't know the rules. Probably went way over the board. Um, but he's, I think he's in compliance now. I, I think there needs to be green space. I think there needs to be farms here and there, you know. Uh, maybe not, like I said, I think he was out of control at first, but, but it's all, uh, all, all there and good. That's the old Montron, like he said, it's the old Montron farm. That used to be acres and acres and acres of hay. Um, one of the guys down lives in that neighborhood, he cut hay for Ralph. Um, these kids nowadays have nowhere to go. They, they, you, you know what happens in our city now. 13-year-old kids are getting shot. They're in gangs at 10 years old. They sit there and they play their stupid games. Instead of their dad kicking their ass, go feed the kids. Squat there and feed them there, 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 there needs to be a green space. I, 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 I really feel for these guys. Uh, and, and like I say, I think Roger was over, just over, overboard. With what he did, but, but it's, it's all under control, I think now, and, and, and uh, he'll he'll keep working on it. And uh, if you guys keep him in line, I think everything should be cool that way. I, I uh, I'm I'm all for green space. You know, I'm big time. I'm farmer, so I, I uh, anybody that can have that, they should have that. This is a cool old farm. Um, uh, and, and, and it's all good. Taxes, you guys got to do what you got to do. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I hate them to go up worse than anybody. And maybe if we didn't, the fire department didn't have to come down for dry runs down in Chesterfield continuously. Maybe if the code enforcement didn't have to spend most of their day chasing lizards in Chesterfield. They chase lizards in Chesterfield all day long. As, uh, turning people in. We just have people that turn people in just because, and now there's established people, quite a few, that are going to sell their houses because they're tired of being having the notes stuck in the fence. Your fence is too tall. You're, all these all these stupid things. And, and if you really, if you do not like us down there, don't move there. Jesus, leave. We like, we're farmers. We like animals. We like our lifestyle. Um, I, 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 I support Roger. I, I just hope it works out for both parties. Really. I, I hate to see a, a war that way. But ah, that's just me. And uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Next is Sharon Davis. Sharon Davis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jessica Hepworth. Probably had to leave. Uh, Sh is it Shalena? Shablina. Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Shalena DeWald, and I would just like to vouch for Roger. I've been with Roger, hanging out, doing, you know, anyways. Um, 
He's a pretty cool guy. He really is. I've known him since last October. I did the pumpkin patch. It was wonderful. You guys had to have been there. I wish you guys were there. I really do. Um, uh, everything that he does is for a reason. He loves having the kids around. He loves having the uh, families of the kids around. He is just... I really vouch for him. I really do. He's a good guy in every way. He, he's just there for everybody, really. Um, we would have, uh, well, he would have um, uh, Cub Scouts, and everything's shaking. <laughs> he would have Cub Scouts come on the property and spend the night, and they just loved it. And um, the people with, that would just come and just enjoy the the horse rides, the mule rides, the uh, just all the animals in general. It was really good times. I really, got, I have really hope you guys over overthink and rethink and uh, really help them out, get them going. You know, the the public is just amazing to me. Anyways, you all have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Next we have Lynn Coolum. Lynn not here? Robert Coulomb's probably not here. Okay, Mark Thorin. Hi, Mayor. I'm here to support my father, Ken, which lives right next door to Roger Chase. Uh, a couple reasons I'm here. Number one reason, Roger has total disregard for the law. I happened to answer one of the phone calls when he called my father 25 times the one day. He threatened us. I mean, we ended up calling the cops. He called me every name that you can think of. He spray painted my dad's cars. He filled his yard with junk. On and on and on. Next, when you guys place your vote, like my father said, let's pretend these animals were right next to your house. I've had animal control come to my house and threaten to give me a $400 ticket because I had three dogs. Have you driven by that place? If he gets to have buffalo in his front yard, I get to have buffalo in my front yard. And the, the animal points, we're not talking about animal points. We're talking about hundreds of animals. We're not talking about a couple cows or a couple buffaloes. We're talking about hundreds of animals. And if that guy moved into the yard right next to either one of you and had hundreds of animals with that smell, we wouldn't be having this discussion because it wouldn't have got this far. It would be no. So like my father said, you know, if it comes up for a third vote, we'll be here with our attorney and it'll be over. Legally over. Thanks. Next is Aaron Horn. Roger Chase is my husband's boss and a loyal family member for more than 20 years. There is nothing wrong with the farm. Everything, sure, we have to deal with flies. Oh goodness. You're going to deal with them regardless. Okay. We have babies. We have all kinds of little buddies we have to feed and love and we're addicted to them this is a therapeutic thing and yes the scouts come in everybody comes in people want this it is so rare nowadays okay we have so many buildings so many structures with such little property nobody can even have dogs which to the guy that was up here earlier. 
hey, more power to you. Have your dogs. There's nothing wrong with having animals, okay? Flies, insects, whatever. It comes with territory. It comes with the season. They're not going to be bothering you in the winter, but animals need love. They need care. It's my therapy. I have to see these guys. My son, who was injured at four years old with a traumatic head injury, he has a significant bond with animals. That's what he does now as an adult. As an adult, he has paid. Roger is a loyal man, and he employs my son to run the farm and play with the animals and talk to them and feed them and everything. And so many people come from around everywhere. My daughter, who's terrified of animals, the only ones she'll touch are on the farm because they are gentle, they are mild, they are taken care of. That's what we do. I have many physical issues, but I will never let that stop me from taking care of the animals that I love on this farm. Yeah, it's not the pigs that were sent away. Okay, the two packing mules that I love dearly, my most favorite beings in the world, were sent to Green River for training. They're mild, but they were sent for training just to get shoot, trimmed, writing practice and everything to come back for the family events. Okay, Roger and Becky are the most loyal and children loving people you could ever meet it's always about the kids and they put it on every season no matter where they are they want it about the kids and the pets if they're wild we don't need them they put forth every effort in their being to make sure that the children can come and play and love and have every aspect of loyalty with these animals. We don't have that in the city. Very often, hardly ever. Do you have a question? Okay. This is what is happening. This is a good thing, and this is what we need. They, they're open to everybody. They're open to everything and every aspect, and they're good people. And they have everything right there at our kids' fingers wantings, willings, touch, everything. It's all right there for the taking. There's no reason for them to not have it. And Roger, we've had our differences, but I'll tell you right now, he is loyal, he is on the ball, and he does what he can to, to change anything that is not right. Okay, he wants this. He's all about building, but now, since he's had the farm, all he wants is for the animals to have a caring home. He takes in rescue animals, everything, and he nourishes them, he helps them, he, he babies them until they're flourished and they can be out on the farm. They can be out running around. It's, that's what happens. And I know because my son is one of the farm hands. He's addicted to animals. We cannot have this gone. We have so many children who need this. This is important because all we have is city blocks and buildings. That's it. Where did old school come from? Not from concrete. It comes from playing and loving and the communication with animals and learning to progress with what is put in front of us, not technology. We need the farm stands. We need all of that. It doesn't matter that other people are upset about it. We want this. These animals are important. We're attached to them. They come and go, but we need them. They don't make a huge problem. And the ones that do are freaking taken care of. We. We nourish, we, we wrangle, we do whatever we have to. We have that under control. We need to have this set up for the children. This is what is important. 
I'm a mom of six, plus a grandmother, and all of them need the farm. There's not much of that left anymore. I'm just saying, we kind of have to have that in today's functions. With everything going on, we have to go back to reality and where it all came from and where it's, at, it's eventually going to end up at. We need that. I'm just saying, it's important. And they provide every aspect that is needed. They really do. And they welcome anybody that comes. And they don't have anything dangerous that's going to affect anybody that, I mean, other than flies. And the smell. It's a farm. It's a smell. It's a farm. But it was originally a farm. That's why all of the stables and buildings and everything were there beforehand. But like Roger said, when he got that farm, it was... He, he was going to build on it, but then he fell in love with it. And now we need these animals for our therapy, for our, our resolve, for everything else that's going on. This is important, and nobody's rejected from it. We need this. Please don't take that from him. Please. And that's all I have to say. Please. Thank you very much. Next is Jesse Campbell. Um, Richard's out for a second. So, I recently got the opportunity to meet Mr. Chase and go to the farm with my children. A little bit of background: I grew up in southern Utah on a very large ranch. I know the smell. We all know the smell, and a lot of people have a lot of very compassionate feelings about this situation. What you wouldn't? Backyard smells. Love animals. We all have compassions. My next door neighbor doesn't shovel his dog shit. Excuse my language. Dog mess in the backyard. My yard stinks. Do I want to take away his puppy? No, I don't. However, I do believe this. When you do begin ranching, farming, gardening, building, you have to learn and start somewhere. You have to get the rules, learn from your mistakes, and go from there. Well, it sounds like there's been some mistakes made. And also, as neighbors, as community members, there's compromises. There's always ways and things to make people happy in the whole circle. It's not always going to be, you do this or you do that, or I can't believe you do this or I can't believe you do that. There's always a fine line of compromising, which I've not been involved in this, and it sounds like it's been back and forth. But at the same time, if we sit down and think about it, my children will never have the experience I had growing up. Think about these kids that are shooting 14-year-olds in the face in this city. The gang members in the city. Imagine if Roger gets a permit and has them out there shoveling muck. Do you know how hard it is to shovel muck and clean it up? Do you know how beneficial that could be for our teens? If we open that up to them, if we give them the opportunity, and my kids will go do it for fun, because that's what I told them I did for fun when I was a kid. I guarantee it. There's not a gang member that's 14 that doesn't know what he's doing that does, that's going to want to go out there and do that. So I just think that taking consideration of the benefits that can come from this and the compromises that can come too. And close your eyes and think about the first time you've got to go and see a baby pig or a hot horse or the first time you've got to go to the farm. What, what kind of joy, joy did that bring to your hearts? And don't you think someone in the city should be able to experience that too? Because people in West Valley, you know they don't all have a lot of money. They can't drive all the way to Roy to the farms. Some of them can't make it up to the bus up to Wheeler Farm. So we need to kind of look at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now that was all that was on the list that I had here. Are there others who have not spoken who would like to speak? Looks like there's three or four, five, six. Okay. Uh, just just start over here and we'll work across the room. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the council for hearing all the comments tonight. I'd like to introduce myself. I am an attorney that works with uh, Mr. Chase. Um, I have had the benefit of yeah. being able to... Your name, because for our record, if there's right. any follow-up, we have to have a way to reach you. Correct. My name is Jonathan Rudd, and I've been working with Miss Knapp in the city for many months. 
Um, I'm, uh, one thing I was hoping that would take place here today is that the, the council and the representatives here could ask her what her opinion is. Because I hear a lot of conjecture and a lot of allegations, a lot of horrible, terrible things. I can promise you one thing, it's true, Roger's passionate. And it's true that um, uh, he is very direct. Um, it's true that he has a very good heart. And it's true that there is no question that um, he is adamant. I, I take no doubt that he has called someone 25 times in a day. He's done that for me if he's ever been worried. <laughs> So I can vouch for that. I can also vouch that some of the things that have been said are untrue about Roger, and that's okay. So all of us have our own opinions, and sometimes we embellish here and there. I would like to stay away from any embellishments today and just kind of speak to, to facts. Since I've been involved in, in this property, since before Roger has owned it, I actually handled the real estate transaction where it was sold from the Beams to ALS, which is owned by Roger. I met with the Beams and discussed the property at that time. We were helping Roger prepare to subdivide it because, as you know, it's somewhat rare to have R18 land and that's very valuable. And we had actually also had builders approach to want to quickly purchase the paper lots right after the subdivision was taken care of and to begin to build. And that was the intent, I believe, at the time, except for Roger had, uh, had fallen in love with this open space, if you do not know. I'll give you a little background and be somewhat succinct. He lived in Draper and had a large uh, track of land in Draper. And uh, for I don't know how many years now, I have gone out to his home for specific holidays, as has my father-in-law who is here, who has worked with Roger for many years. And we've taken our children because Roger thought it would be a good idea to build a tree house and to have the largest Halloween festivities at his home for the entire Draper community. There had to have been thousands of people there. And he did that on a regular basis, and I've attended that multiple times. So I know his intent in wanting to, to uh, uh, better the lives of children and families. That's rare in Draper. It's somewhat, uh, it's very capitalistic, which is fine, but that, I don't think people are trying to have open space for children to come have uh, Halloween parties for Halloween and come trick-or-treat there and have a man spend months preparing it each year. But nevertheless, uh, I was involved in the transaction. I met with the Beams and I knew what was happening on the property beforehand. We discussed the horse stables and the animals that were on the land at that time and prior. They discussed the hope of what would happen with the land and it wasn't that it would be developed. They were going on a mission and uh, we discussed that and they knew that uh, Roger and his company, ALS, was purchasing that property. We had discussed the barns that were on the property, and it just so happens that uh, eventually that would come uh, to be good knowledge. But um, we were just discussing it because it was interesting to have that kind of land in West Valley at the time. So uh, we handled the transaction. It was purchased, and then Roger was going to, as you know, there was one home that uh, the Beans had lived in. He was going to improve that home, sell that, and also sell all the lots. Well, he happens to be a mad scientist when it comes to building and has changed that home and it is beautiful, has somewhat of a modern feel in it um, uh, in, in different aspects. It is beautiful, it is, the, the value of that home is amazing and Roger decided he wanted to live there and have a place for the community and at that time uh, he brought animals in and I tell you this little backstory to help you understand some of the allegations that have been made here but when he brought uh, animals in and was asked by someone that they had had an issue if they could park some cars on his property while he was rehabbing it. As you know, it was a dump, the, the property, and he spent an, an enormous amount of money and time cleaning that up. Um, and I actually called Jody Knapp at the, the city. And I said, listen, I have a feeling you have met my client, Roger, Roger Chase. I want you to know, Roger may come across as, as gruff, maybe very direct, but he has a very good heart. And, and I said, if he's not in compliance, if there's any issue, please work through me and I will ensure that things are taken care of quickly. During this time period, right after he had decided that he was going to go down this avenue to continue on with the farm that was already present there, and that I had spoken about with the Beams, um, he had brought in too many animals, he had allowed a, a third party to park some cars on this property. I did not know, but he had put up a sign, he had gotten a website, uh, I met with him, I worked with Jody Knapp from the city, all of that was rectified. And as you know, there are no, there, the animal count on that property is far below code at this time. 
for any agricultural, that is. Uh, there are no signs. He has invested to build fences. He is, he is committed to keeping animals away from property, something that wasn't happening at the beginning. So when someone talks about smells and flies, I live in Bluffdale, just so you know, so I know a little bit about these things, especially with horses and animals. Um, <clears throat> and I moved there because of some of those things. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, when people bring those things up, those were things that were happening in the past. Those have been rectified. There's no piles of, of feces or crap that's hanging around this property at this time or piles of things sitting there where uh, it's infringing on someone's enjoyment of their backyard or anything of that nature. I believe that when too many animals were brought in, that could have been happening at the time, and so I'm not going to deny that. But I can assure you, and Miss Knapp can, that they are in compliance and that I have been in regular contact with her. And I have said, if there's anything we need to do, please let me know. And she will, I believe she can let you know as well that those things haven't taken care of and that we're committed to that in the future. I want that to be said. I hear all of these allegations of you will hear my lawyer and blah, blah, blah. I find that to be nonsensical and stupid. Um, this is about zoning of a property that already has a pre-existing use that was there pre previously. You can imagine what's gonna happen. Um, uh, if it's just claiming that it's a non-conforming use, but I don't think we need to go there. Uh, horses were there when it was purchased. There were animals there when it was purchased. These barns were there. Uh, I don't know what happened in 1985. There is no record of the application for R18. I find that to be somewhat interesting, but no one knows why it was changed to R18. Obviously, someone wanted to, to subdivide it and, and probably sell it off, make some money. Um, but I will tell you, there are no facts concerning that that we can find. I don't think that West Valley City can either. Uh, hearing from what Ms. Knapp was able to find as well, but I, I just want to close and say the things that have, the allegations that have been made, some that were true about too many animals and things, those have been rectified. Um, we can't hold that against this individual. I think in society what we want is if anyone understands any wrongs that have taken place, what we want them to do is to make them right. We want them to improve things. We want them to make an effort. That's taken place here, and that will continue to take place in the future, but I am committed to working with the city to ensure that it is a benefit to the city, this land, and that these things can happen. And uh, I think Ms. Knapp can, can let you know that as well. But I would hope that you would ask her her thoughts. My understanding is she thinks this needs to go through, and it should. If she is not gonna make the decision, but she's on the front lines more than anybody here, I think, in dealing with this. So I think it may be good to get her opinion. And I feel for the neighbors, I can just tell you that we're committed to making sure their experience is different. And I think that will take place. Thank you. Thank you. Next. I'm Ken Thorpe's wife, I live next door. And the bottom line is, if this goes through, where are the people gonna park the cars that come to the petting zoo, the pumpkin patch, the Christmas tree lot? Uh, the cars that stop there to let their kids off had to go park away, block, two blocks down the street, and then come back, there is not room to park cars for commercial business. You know, it would be nice if they had a, a great big parking lot for the customers that were buying pumpkins and going to the petting zoo. But it creates a, a traffic jam on 3100 South. I live next door. I know the cars are parked in front of my place and down our street. And, and you can't park on 3100 South because the sidewalk is right next to the busy street. So they have to go to the church on the corner of 3100 South and 3450 to park and then walk back and it's, it creates a traffic hazard. And that's my bottom line. Thank you. Next, someone who hasn't spoken. My name is Thane Gates and I have a small farm, I call it a petting zoo, in West Jordan. And it's a little bit like Rogers, but not as fancy. Um, but I also work for, this is the place, Heritage Park. And if you've ever been there, you know how much fun your kids and your grandkids have when they go there. You know that. I mean, they'll stand in lines just to ride the little ponies around the carousel. They'll go on the train and they'll, you know, have fun. They'll make little things. They'll experience things to learn how to milk a cow. How many of your grandkids has ever even gone close to a, a cow, let alone milk it? Um, this is a small place, 
but this can be an area for your grandkids here in West Valley to experience those things. They've said scouts before. Where can a scout go get his horseman merit badge? Camps. They have to go to camps to do that. They have to find a, a rancher someplace else where here's an opportunity for them to come and learn about horses right in your backyard. Learn that horses smell. Learn that pigs smell. Learn that there is flies that come from there. Learn how to clean it up. Learn how to take care of it. I mean, these are the things that kids grow from. What about, I don't know how many of you are from farming backgrounds, but if you are, you know how hard it is to buck hay, to stack hay, to feed the animals. You've got to get up when? Four o'clock in the morning. And when do you go to bed? Nine o'clock at night. And the next day you start over. That's good for people. That's good for us. And I know Roger Chase, he is my brother-in-law, and I know that he'll do whatever it takes to help benefit the children of this area. Thanks for your time. Thank you. We allow every individual to have their own time to speak, so seems like there were some over here. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Mona Thorup. Um, I am Ken's daughter-in-law. Um, I live at 3410 West El Cabrillo Drive, which is just adjacent to Thorup Circle. Uh, we have been there in our property in West Valley for the last 20 years. It was property owned by my father-in-law that was then subdivided, and there's four family homes in that cul-de-sac. When we purchased that property and built our home there, um, there was no one directly uh, north of us. Our dream was our boys could ride their four-wheelers and not get into any trouble. We could have pets. Times have changed in the last 20 years. That's not, that's not available to us anymore. There are homes there. There are people who have spent their life savings to build their little homes and have their property. And I think this is a matter of respecting everyone's property. Their property is larger, and um, I love the fact that they, they want to have that for their family, their children, and their grandchildren. What I'm hearing more is that if it's zoned agricultural, this is going to turn into the West Valley Wheeler Farm. And there isn't parking for that. There isn't uh, the ability for us to have that influx. Um, you know, someone mentioned the, the gang problem that we have here. We do have a gang problem. We have issues that teenagers are getting in trouble. I have a brother who's a law enforcement officer, is chief of police. I understand that. I don't feel that this property is where we're going to rehabilitate those gang members. And that's what I'm hearing, is that their desire is to bring them in and muck the stalls. And while that is good hard work, and it may teach someone something, that isn't the purpose of rezoning this property. Um, they're welcome to have within the laws and the, and the boundaries that have been set, those animals, and they're, they're welcome to enjoy that on their property with their families, um, to, to bring in and make it a, a commercial endeavor within the city. I don't feel that that's what we need. There are other places for us to go and enjoy those, those same things. Um, I would hope that you would um, take into consideration all of those other smaller properties that sit around there, most of those adjacent. You spoke heard from a gentleman here this evening who can no longer enjoy the, his back patio because of the smell and the flies. And when it's 110 degrees outside and there's animal feces and the heat and the flies, you're not going to enjoy having a hot dog in your own backyard. And that's not fair to, to those other neighbors. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Was there one more? Someone over here who hadn't spoken, I think. Good evening. Um, my name is Dean Miller. I live at uh, 2531 South Hempstead. Um, I'll preface by saying I don't know Roger at all. Um, I, I'd heard about this uh, within a few minutes of, of the beginning of this meeting, and um, it had struck me very hard because. 
uh, a, a lot of the things that I, I have three daughters, and a lot of the things I hear is, can we go, uh, can we go look at the horse as we're going, as we're driving by? You know, there are several properties that have horses, or there are several properties that have goats. Can we go, uh, can we go touch the goat? Can we go see that? Or, you know, of course, they're mistakenly calling the, the, the goat, the cow, or, you know, things like that, because they don't, <laughs> they don't even quite know what, the, what they are, because, you know, young children. And um, a lot of the time, I'm, I'm looking around for things for my children to do, for activities to do that I got to do growing up. Um, and it was even rare while I was growing up uh, that there were very few places where I could go to be able to learn to ride a horse or take ho care of a horse, uh, to be able to learn to milk a goat, to be able to raise dogs. Uh, you know, to just to be able to interact with animals, it became uh, more difficult to be able to find these locations. Uh, and when you did find them, um, were they too far of a travel distance? Uh, were they too expensive, um, et cetera. You know, and it wasn't just the entrance fee, but the, the gas going out there, et cetera. Um, and in the middle of the city, where there's an option on the table to be able to create one of these places, to be able to, and uh, I'll interject just a little bit there. I, I've heard many concerns regarding uh, the cleanliness, um, uh, the smell, the overcrowding of animals, etc. But if it's going to be used as one of these um, petting zoos, uh, places to learn about these things, it, it'll be regulated. Uh, therefore, those will be, you know, of course, uh, taken care of as a matter of course that they won't become an issue. Uh, but I would like, in the middle of <laughs> hundreds of blocks of houses and houses and houses, subdivisions, you know, businesses, uh, et cetera, to be able to have some place where I can spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes driving to an area where I can spend, you know, three hours, five hours with my children, you know, letting them pet these animals to be able to um, have them see this and this opportunity. And, and being raised as a scout, um, you know, uh, being an Eagle Scout, um, I got to see and do a lot of these merit badges. And I can tell you that for a lot of the scout troops that I got to interact with, the jamborees and, and, and all of the scout camps that we went to, a lot of the scouts did not have easy access. And this is, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, let alone today, they did not have easy access to go to places to get their merit badges, to be able to learn these things to teach to their children after they were grown, let alone as, as scouts growing up. And that would be an invaluable resource for scout troops, Cubs, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, Girl Scout programs as well. And so, yeah, that's, thank you. Thank you. We have one more over here, hasn't spoken. Looks like a couple more. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hall. I am a cosmetologist and I've been doing that for 33 years. Most of my clientele are, the youngest is probably maybe 60. The oldest is 104. I also now, since my business has been dying, because we all kind of die, <laughs> have heard where some of the seniors have gone to Rogers Farm and seen these things. So not just only little kids, seniors are enjoying it. And I'm hearing the joyfulness of these senior citizens going back to their roots and seeing these animals that they've had or haven't ever seen. Plus, how many times I've heard kids say, I, we had a few chickens in our backyard for a while and we'd give all our neighbors these eggs and one of the kids says, oh I can't eat that, I only eat store-bought eggs. They don't realize where eggs come from and same with milk. These kids think only things go from the store. So we're depriving our children and our older people, we've got too many buildings grow going up. Sugar House is a nightmare. 
and that's where my shop is for 33 years. There is so many buildings going up. Where are we going to put our kids to even see land or the sunshine? Because the buildings are going so high, it's getting awful. And I know West Valley has bad gains, so maybe this one little piece of heaven might not, I'm not saying the gains would be there, but you know, maybe if we could bring our kids to see what our childhood, I was raised on a farm. I had a little Shetland pony. I used to ride it to D's drive through and get 10 cent hamburgers through the drive through your kids can't do that now. They can't even, they can't even ride a pony. My, my friend that lives in West Valley had horses and they have built up all the way around her. And, and she has no place for her horses to go. You have to trailer them places quite a distance. And it's just, it's sad that we don't have the farming life or the you know the things for us kids i i think i'm a pretty good adult and have good morals and stuff but i think the reasons i do is because i grew up on a farm i had to get up feed the chickens slop the pigs when my dad had operations i had to milk the cows and then i went to school and then I'd come home from school and I'd have to do the same thing. Kids, all they do, just like they've all said, sit and watch TV and play Nintendos and pretend to kill people. And, you know, I appreciate our police force and everyone that, that's out there, but we need to bring our kids down so that they can, you know, realize life is worth it living instead of just shooting and stabbing and killing each other because this has gotten to be an awful world so if there could be a little bit of farming in heaven for kids and even seniors the seniors that have mentioned to me i was shocked that when they said oh yeah we went out and seen that farm in west valley and it was really cool we got to see llamas and horses and you know, it brought them back. And when you get to be 90 years old, which none of you look like you're quite there, <laughs> you're gonna want to maybe, if you're in a senior citizen living, go to some farm. So, thank you. She would like one more. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and Administrators in the back. Um, I'm the Scout Master for Troop 1151 in our ward in the Granger North Stake. Oh, my name is Paniani Uelo. Yeah. You may need to help us just a little bit with that. Pani or JP. So, um, my bishop asked us that we need to do at least six to eight camps or uh, one, one camp one month camp 12 times a year. So I noticed there was a triple R ranch across the street from us. So I approached uh, that gal, she was running it, I forgot her name, but uh, talked to Roger Chase, and we did a swap, service for service. So what we did is, uh, it was 200 a night, but what we did is brought all the troops there, had overnight camp, signed off some of them from our four merit badges. but. I have 32 boys, youth, and out of 32 of them, just a handful are gang kids, and I brought four of them there with me. And uh, boy, it was an opportunity for them, especially for them to see their eyes and see the changes that they go through. And he says, the last time I remember one of our kids said, is that uh, when we were back in Samoa, my dad used to carry him in the back to a pig farm. So this brings back a lot of memories. So anyway, Chase gave us the opportunity to take our troops there and to do a lot of great things, uh, have overnight at camp, and then um, next month we're scheduled for an Eagle uh, service project. So just our troop alone, we probably have seven Eagles in the last four months in our 
board. And then this next Eagle Project is a kid that um, came out of a gang trouble family and he's living with his aunt. He's down the street from where Triple Ranch is at. So he's doing a lot better. He's making better choices. But anyway, I hope that we can continue on to support um, these. Uh, this is a good thing to have a little um, ranch out there. Um, like some of the members are saying, you know, we can't afford to go down south or north. You know, it's just right in the backyard. So we're hoping that we'll continue on with this uh, great project. But thank you. Okay. Looks like we have a couple more. Start here. Good evening. My my name is Lois Mortensen. I teach second grade at South Jordan Elementary School. I, um, and I take these students on a field trip to Butterfield Farm every year. And we um, hatch chicken eggs in my classroom and I do a lot of science. And I will just say amen to everything that's been said, how much young people and the elderly people need animals in their lives. But one thing that I want to say is I went to the Chase Barn just this last week for the first time. And I don't want it to be not heard that I have never seen such beautiful, well taken care of animals in my whole life. I was in heaven. These animals, and you know it takes a lot of work to, I mean, I live on a farm too. My brother is saying. It takes a lot of work to make animals look that beautiful and to have animals that well taken care of. And I just want you to know that I don't, and I don't know about parking. I know at the Butterfield Farms, when we take them there in Harriman every year, they don't have parking either for the field trip. They have field trips for students for three days. And the community gathers around, the city there gathers around, and helps out and, and finds places for the buses to park and it works out. So I just want you to know that um, Roger certainly knows how to take care of animals and I think that needs to be taken in, into consideration. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, my name is Dave Palmer. I am one of the fortunate people that have worked for Roger and I've worked at the ranch many times. Um, to the subject about the um, helps with the gangs and the killing, um, back in my day I've had troubles with drugs and being part of a gang. And I happened to drop out of high school and that's when I started working for Roger. And I never knew what work was until I met Roger. And then when he got the ranch, I was one of the people that was cleaning up the ranch, taking all those dumpsters and loads of garbage out, he decided one day to keep it, and I thought it was cool. I didn't know what to do with animals when I first started, and then he asked me to help him a couple times, and I went over the weekend a couple times to help feed the animals, and yeah, it's hard work, and but I love the animals. I've gone there, and some animals I thought that would never go, and stand near, I'm always petting, and they're always nice. I haven't had a single problem with any of the animals. Flies are flies. I bet no one in their yard can walk outside of the yard and see a fly. You have a barbecue in your yard and have a bit food out on the table. You don't have a lot of flies attacking you no matter what. I have three dogs of my own. Um, they smell. The crap smells. But none of my neighbors have ever complained. And now the neighbors have complained that I have three dogs because as long as they're in control, because when, when you first get a new animal, yeah, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to run off. My dogs did it. But it's just a way to learn how to work it out and make it work, I guess. But, that, but yeah, I think the ranch was a really cool place, and it helped me a lot mentally and physically because I used to also weigh 300 pounds, and it made me lose all my weight. So I became a better person because of Roger and because of that ranch. And I wouldn't like to see the ranch go by. I would like, I would like to see it keep going, stronger and stronger, and better and better. 
because it brought it made me happy, it made my father happy when he used to work and take care of the animals. Maybe that's all I have to say. Thank you. Did we get everyone at least a chance to speak? If you wanted to? It looks like we have. With that then, we'll close the public comment period on this issue and bring it back to the council for further discussion or motion or whatever. Mayor, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Um, one is with respect to the public hearing, this public hearing and other public hearings, or public hearings in general. Uh, often we hear the comment, if I don't get my way, I'm going to sue you if you hear from my lawyer. And I just want to uh, say that as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> uh, that is not persuasive. I don't think that any of the residents, if they really thought it through, would want us to make decisions based upon threats any more than they would want us to make decisions based upon bribes. And uh, we don't do any of those things. Uh, the other comment I would make is that I'm in favor of petting zoos, urban farms, pumpkin patches, all of those things. I think those things are great and they certainly have a place. But one thing that is uh, I can't get past and that's compelling in this situation is when the owner bought this property, he knew it was zoned R18. In fact, what I've heard is that he bought it because it was zoned R18. He was planning to develop it, and then he changed his mind and disregarded the law that governed that property for a couple of years now, and is still in violation. It may be in compliance with a zoning that it does not have, but as far as the animals are, it's still not in compliance with the zoning that it does have and has had for years. And that's, we'll conclude my comments at this time. Uh, I want to say something. I, uh, I grew up in Vietnam and uh, my family uh, bought a small property at, at the end of the street at uh, Kusai and we uh, we had uh, chickens and pigs and stuff so I grew up with that. I, uh, my job, uh, my chores, I took care of those chickens and uh, pigs and ducks and other things. So when I came over here, um, I have our rental properties here in uh, our city, but I pick uh, Jessica, the place I uh, want my kids to be there. The reason because they have some horses and goats and chickens and ducks. Um, that's kind of like, uh, refresh me about when I was childhood in Vietnam. Um, my family, uh, they bought that land at the end of the street. Um, so nobody complained about the smell or about the stuff in our property because we took care very well. And also, we also um, far away from other people. Here, one thing is that, to be honest with you, uh, Roger Chase, he made a very compelling statement. Um, and uh, Ken Toro, is, uh, he has a very strong rebuttal uh, tonight. Um, he uh, very, would be in a very difficult, very uh, difficult situation to um, going to make a yes or no tonight, but I have a couple of questions I want to ask for Jody Knapp before we're going to do anything. Um, since then, um, you mentioned about, you know, actually the Mr. Uh, Roger Chase, he says about he complies with the city rule here and regulation here, 
So the animal is this right now basically under control, is that right, uh, Mr. Yeah, please. Yes, please come to the microphone to respond. I suspect we do have others listening in, so. So the question was if he's in compliance with the animal points? Yeah. Um, per the animal control office, they've gone to do an inspection, and it's my understanding that he's within the animal points. If it were agriculture, if it were agriculture. which it is not. Correct. He's not in compliance with so, R18 animal use, right? Correct. Uh, the next question I want to ask you is, um, so basically, like my colleague he mentioned earlier, and I want to get the confirmation from you, when he bought this one, he know this one is all one a correct? Yes. Or, okay. And he used all one a for the other culture zoning as they put animals in there, correct? Yes, he used, so the R18 zoning was used for the subdivision, and then it would need to be agricultural zoning to have the farming animals. No, I mean that the, when he has it, he bought this one at R18. Yes. And he used it for having animals. Yes. Okay. Um, I will come back later. Well, oh, I have a couple questions for Tony. Um, if, if it is zoned agriculture, would they be allowed to have annoying odors? No, just per the, the the nuisance ordinance and the health department, that would be addressed in, in that in that code. And what about the commercial uses that he has planned? Are those allowed in an agriculture zone? Okay, thank you for bringing that up. So, um, yeah, that, that, the discussion this evening, I think, was, was geared heavily towards that, which was not part of the application. Um, initially, we were contacted by Mr. Chase's attorney. It was back in November of 2016. And he had indicated that the pumpkin patch was an idea, the petting zoo, the Christmas tree lot, all the information that was submitted on the website. And we had several meetings, and basically, um, laid out the framework of how to to go through the process to get all that that stuff done on the property um, The first is rezoning it to agricultural that helps with the animal uses and then like fruit and vegetable stands That's something that's allowed in an agricultural zone um, The next thing when you have the commercial uses or the public coming to the property They would have to apply for a conditional use to get that approved in an agricultural zone and then the last part is with Christmas tree lots, those are allowed as a temporary use in commercial zones. So we had discussed modifying the city code to add Christmas tree lots as a temporary use that would be in an agricultural zone, like possibly with a one acre lot minimum. So yeah, the community aspect was a whole different application with a whole different set of requirements and it would be another public hearing and a different review. When the rezone application was originally submitted, again, a lot of those aspects were included. And we had correspondence going back and forth because when, when you have an application like that where it increases the traffic on the property and the public's coming to the property, there's a lot of different requirements that kick in. And the plan was just uh, very conceptual. So we raised concerns um, exactly where, where would the parking go, are there employees, where would the restroom facilities be, there's handicap accessibility requirements. And so upon bringing up all those requirements, Mr. Chase just said, yeah, I mean, that, that's just too much, I'm not ready to, to go through that process at this time. And initially had, had said he was just going to withdraw the application altogether and then had come back to the office saying that it, he wants to rezone the property live on it himself and have the animals there for personal use only. And that is what is put in the issue paper, the staff report. There, there were no additional documents turned in for the community use, which again is, is a completely separate type of application. 
Excellent questions. Anything else for John? I'll just say one thing. I agree with um, what Council Member Mueller said. I was fortunate. I didn't grow up in Salt Lake County. I grew up in Utah County where we had plenty of land, and it was a long time ago. So everybody had plenty of land. But we had the cows. I've slopped pigs. I've done it all, and it was great. My daughter did not like that we grew up in West Valley and we couldn't have horses. She couldn't just get on a horse and go in the mountains like I could. But it's the choice we made where to raise our family. And that's what is the difference is the placement. I think the idea is awesome, but it's the placement of where he wants to do this and the commercial part that gives me pause on this application. So perhaps this would be a good point. Thank you, Jody, to kind of summarize what's before us. We have before us a request to take a piece of property that is zoned for R1A residential homes. The request is to make it agricultural. We've had a lot of comments which were essentially not germane to that issue, such as gangs. Uh, certainly the place will, it was not, and I don't think really planned on getting the appropriate licenses to treat uh, troubled youth uh, with uh, those kind of things. That's kind of a separate issue. Uh, and even dogs were brought up. Uh, dogs enjoy a special place under state law that is different from all other animals. And so again, the fact that uh, a dog may be in a yard is very different from what we're talking here. It is interesting for me to note that it seems like those who were in favor were coming from some place other than next to the piece of property and would enjoy having that use. So we talked. Now let's get back to that issue. What is the right of the owner of the property where it is requested to be rezoned versus the owner of the property next to it? And I look at that and I say both have rights. They, they expect to have the enjoyment of their property. So when I vote, I have to look and say, okay, if I do this, what compelling reason do I have to make the change? I've heard a lot of testimony, but most of it doesn't apply to what I'm voting on, which is simply change from R1A to A. And if I do that, what is the impact to the owner of the property? What is the impact on those who are next to that property? And so really what we should have been discussing is if this is zoned agricultural, how would that affect those next to it? And what steps were to be taken to ensure that that would not have a negative impact on those right next to it? Certainly, if I went there, I would enjoy the petting zoo. Well, not necessarily that, but looking at animals. Uh, but I don't live there. So how do we balance those rights so that the individuals living next to it can enjoy their property as well? That's why we have elected officials to make those determinations. So as we weigh that, we're going to weigh, does the rights of one property owner supersede another one? We constantly do that. We do it with ordinance enforcement. We do it with zoning. There are many issues that come to us in that vein. So let's just make sure that when we are voting, that we vote on the issue before us, which is, changing a piece of property from R18 to agricultural. And if that is beneficial to the city, uh, we can't talk in terms of individuals and the benefits to them, but rather does this fit in with the uh, vision and plan of the city? That's our goal. So with that kind of summary or just little rambling piece there, Let's get back to the specific issue before us and see if there's interest in, at this point, a motion. So I need to just clarify. Appropriate. 
if we vote for the zone change, that's what we're doing here, or are we voting for upholding the denial? If you vote to uphold the planning commission's uh, decision, which would be denial. Denial. That's right. It would stay R18. If you vote to overturn the planning commission's decision, then it would be granting the agricultural zone, as I understand it. Jody, I need your confirmation. Well, actually, you could make the motion in either of those ways. You could, but yeah, to your understanding of how yeah. you're presenting it's it. It's not a yes or no on this. It's just stating how it is. Okay. Well, ultimately, we have to vote yes or no, but we have to make sure the motion is correct here. For approval of this application or denial. Okay, I think I understand. Okay, so Nicole just pointed out to me from a clear standpoint that you're approving or denying the ordinance as it was. Why don't you just go ahead and state it? So the ordinance is for the zone change. So you're, if you were to approve the ordinance, that would change the zoning to agricultural. If you deny the ordinance, that keeps the property what it is. That's why we have our city recorder. She helps us a lot. Make sure we do it right. Uh, um, you're done? Yes. Okay. Thank you. One more question for well, Jody. Uh huh. Please. So this property has been R one eight, correct? Yes, and the research that I've done—it's it, just been off of zoning maps. It, it's been R one eight since about nineteen eighty five. Nineteen eighty five. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, I've got one question for Jody as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, if the zone change is denied and the property remains R18, as you mentioned earlier, they would have the owner would have an option to go to the Board of uh, Adjustments to ask for an animal rights determination. What would the animal rights determination include? What would be the leeway or the ability at the Board of Adjustments level to limit or approve or find what those animal rights would be? So the burden of proof is on the applicant, and so it really depends on their type of application. Um, if there's clear evidence, let's say that there were five horses on one acre and there's always been the same five horses and it's it's kind of hinges on that specific so use. hinges on history correct pre, yes pre-existing condition okay yeah so if, if the application is saying i want to keep my five horses and it's pretty specific the board can look at it that way that's a little bit difficult to prove so typically it's just whether you can have animals there or not and then if you can then it's then the the points typically are just what what the board uses as the number so if the Board of Adjustment said, yes, we're going to give you an animal rights determination, but they couldn't determine from history what was pre-existing, the existing there, then they would basically make that decision according to the point system. Yes. Do understand that correctly? Yes. Right. Jody, would, um, would the neighbors be notified of the Board of Adjustment's hearings? Yes, they have the same noticing criteria as, as these hearings. Thank you. Just for information purposes, the public hearing portion of the discussion is closed. Uh, it's with the council and will remain there until. I want uh, to have one my last comment. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, uh, to boil it out to very much, we all understand this property has been R18 since 1985 from according to Jody Knapp. So the people, they purchased 
of the properties around this area. They are assuming and they have a conception. This is R18. That's the bottom line. Conclude your comments. Mm -hmm. Still with the council. Mayor, I would move to uh, deny the uh, resolution. Got to get the number Ordin up here. Ordinance, excuse 1728. me. 1728. Second. We have a motion and a second. It is properly before us. Any discussion to the motion? Just to make sure we're all clear, a motion to deny the ordinance upholds the Planning Commission's denial of the application. Is that right? And when we say yes, we're actually voting to deny the application. Correct. Everyone okay? Clear? Any further comments? Seeing no further comments, We'll go to our city recorder to take the roll call vote as required by state law. Councilwoman Link? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Nordfeld? Yes. Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion for denial passes unanimously. So we go on to the next item on our agenda, which is to accept mayor. Uh, yes. Before we proceed into this next matter, which also might be lengthy, could we take a recess? Uh, yes, we will be discussing next the budget, and so those of you who came for that, we do need to take just a brief break. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get started again. Uh, we'll go to the next item on our agenda. We do have a quorum. We should be joined shortly by uh, Councilman Nordfeld. Uh, we turn now to uh, the budget for West Valley City for fiscal year 2017-2018. I believe that we are prepared to do a brief presentation uh, to summarize the budget. And so, uh, Jim, if you'll... Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, Jim Welch, Finance Director for the City. Um, we This is the um, consideration of adopting the final budget for fiscal year 2018. Um, just a refresher, I won't go through each of the bullet points on here, but uh, you'll remember that the budget process begins approximately in December when we start examining the revenues that are available to the City. Uh, we look at the expenditures through February. We meet with the council several times uh, discussing the priorities of the council. And uh, with those priorities and with the available revenues, we put together a proposed budget and work on that for the next number of months. Uh, through Generally through April, we'll take feedback from the department heads uh, where they'll present their needs and their uh, resources that they have to use uh, for providing city services. And then in May, uh, by law, we adopt the tentative budget, which is a budget that allows the city to operate uh, while it considers the adoption of the final budget, which is either adopted in June, uh, or in the case of a property tax adjustment or property tax increase, uh, that a budget can be adopted in August, and that's the date that we're facing today. Uh, we prepare the, the budget to um, govern finance officer standards. Uh, you'll recall and the public may be interested in this, that we have received an award for transparency and clarity uh, of that budget document for over 20 years, and we feel that it accurately reflects the needs and the resources available to provide the services that the city uh, uh, is organized to provide. We have a couple of things that uh, provide constraints and drivers for the budget. Uh, we have, we're like a, any other sort of business, we're subject to the um, pressures from ongoing increasing cost of services due to inflation, uh, due to the economy. Uh, we, this year pro we projected modest growth as the economy, economy has been kind of slowly growing. Uh, the city also has increased costs. We also have some revenues that increase and some that remain flat. 
there, and we'll talk about that a little bit specifically in a moment. Uh, some other things that provide constraints and instruction, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, direction to the budget is that uh, part of the charge of the city is to maintain the infrastructure and maintain the valuable assets of the city, as in roads, uh, buildings, uh, systems that we have set in place to provide for the quality of life for the citizens. And those costs are evaluated by the department's heads and then we then we look at ways to be able to provide those things to maintain them so that the valuable investment of the citizens is uh, is able to continue to provide the services we need. With the expenditure projections, um, we take into account the growth of the economy. This last year, uh, sales tax has continued to grow at approximately 2% on an annual basis. Sometimes we've seen that grow a lot faster, and other times we've had some significant decreases. Uh, that makes up approximately a third of our revenue, and we'll show that in the next slide. Uh, property taxes, which are very stable from year to year and by state law, uh, can't exceed the previous year's budgeted, expended, budgeted revenues with the exception of new growth. Uh, we expect new growth to be around 1%, which isn't quite keeping up with inflation or the cost of doing business as a city. Um, there's also another, a number of other costs that we experience. There's fuel, of course, to keep, keep the fire department, police department, public works running. Uh, we also have debt service and obligations to uh, pay our bonds and also pay leases which would be used to buy equipment and to, uh, to build buildings for the, to house the services of the city. Uh, and then also the cost of maintaining our personnel. Our budget typically runs about 65% goes towards personnel costs. And as you all know, the cost of insurance continues to go up and the cost of living continues to go up. Incidentally, this year, the uh, municipal cost index, which is put together by the American City and County publication uh, anticipated that they would show about 3% growth. Uh, we're showing about 2.5% uh, growth in our costs this year uh, with, uh, if you take out the cost of increasing the operation for the police department. I'll get into that detail in just a moment. So we've been pretty close to what the projections have been. This next slide shows you uh, last year's budget compared to this year's budget. We have a, an increase of 4%, and as I mentioned before, about 2.7% uh, uh, of that budget is actually the increase in regular operations, debt service, obligations we have to pay our ongoing uh, cash flow needs, and then about 1.3% represents an increase in the um, police department to provide additional officers and uh, additional services which was presented to the council several weeks before. That also includes um, the cost of the providing that increase is about $1 million and that is the portion of the property tax increase that is being proposed with this. The um, expenditures have um, remained relatively flat. We see about a uh, 2.7% increase in those also. How our budget breaks down is uh, about 38% of the budget for city operations comes from property taxes right now. 33 is projected to come from sales tax and the remaining 29% comes from service fees, licenses, and permits. Uh, so we have a fairly balanced revenue picture. Some cities are quite unbalanced where maybe a big short chunk of it comes from sales tax or from user fees. Uh, we've always felt that the distribution of revenues, kind of a third, a third, a third, kind of makes us a little bit more stable and the rating agencies have been positive with that, maintaining a good bond rating agency rating. Just, I'm sorry, just, yes, did we miss the slide there? Um, just on the picture. Yeah, yeah there's, some, there's just a, a there, okay. bad, bad appearance slide on the decks here, so just need to look up there. Okay, great. All right, um, the expenditures, uh, about 42% of the expenditures of the budget goes to public safety, and then uh, the remainder goes to uh, running the city, whether it be public works, parks, community rec recreation, uh, and preservation, also to debt service. Now, where does that money come and go from, come to, come from and go to? Um, this is a uh, screenshot of a 
site on our website that allows an individual to go in and put the value of their home into this calculator and get an estimate of where their property taxes might be. The total property tax bill for a home of value of $199,000, which is the median high price of a home determined by the county this year, about 28% of your tax property taxes goes to the Granite School District, about 27% goes to West Valley City, and then Salt Lake County, if you add the Salt Lake County Library, uh, the county assessment and their judgment is about 21%. Then you can see all the rest of the service districts, whether it be Granger, Hunter, Central Valley, Water, some of the other, uh, the Mosquito Abatement District make up the rest of the property tax bill. Of that bill, which is typically about uh, $1,676, $454 comes to West Valley City. And with that $454, uh, that's where we provide the services. Again, about, um, uh, well, we show the police department's about 31%, and then our fire is about 13%. I always get asked what non-departmental is. Non-departmental expenditures include transfers to other funds, whether it would be to assist and uh, pay for the fitness center, or if it would be to pay for uh, obligations we have in debt service, including Utopia, and some of our other obligations are put into the non-departmental. Those are expenses that can't be specifically qualified to uh, one department. So you can all look that up if you'd like to. Uh, we try and keep this as accurate as possible so a person can get some kind of an idea where they'll be. <clears throat> However, this doesn't take into account new tax increases and uh, sometimes the rates that we're able to put in here, they're always close. They won't be exact based on your personal, personal tax bill. The next page, uh, this is the actual property tax notice that was published in the newspaper. We're required by state law to publish a, um, a notice in the newspaper that shows the proposed tax change, whether we are going to impose a judgment levy or whether we're going to have a property tax increase. Uh, this particular notice includes two types of property tax adjustments. The first one is what's called a judgment levy. And I, we've gone over that quite a bit with the council, but for a refresher, when large businesses appeal the value of their property, and that it actually goes to uh, an appeals board or to a court, and that court makes a, makes a judgment to rebate property taxes that they have been over-assessed for previous years. So in other words, they say that their property has been assessed over, with greater value than, uh, than, it really, than it's really worth. They will award a judgment. The money that's awarded in that judgment is required to pay back, pay back in a rebate to those businesses in the year that it's awarded. Uh, this year, West Valley City had the opportunity to um, have one of its largest property taxpayers and several other taxpayers uh, appeal some tax values that went back for 20 years. Uh, that money was actually uh, proposed to come out of West Valley City's budget and will be taken out of the budget. It was $2.7 million of a total judgment of over $14 million. Of that 2.7, uh, West Valley Cities has been able to uh, find resources and find ways to adjust costs and expenditures to cover all but about $848,000 of that. So that is the portion that is being asked to balance the budget. A judgment levy is a one-time adjustment in property taxes where the property tax uh, burden is because the courts have moved the property tax away from a business and uh, taken that revenue away from the city, the state allows the city to go back and readjust the property tax rates to make up that hole so they're able to make their budget balance and so they're able to continue to provide services. This happens one year, it's not ongoing, and it will go away next year. So the dollar amount comes up to about $1.33 a month uh, or about $13 this year to make up the hole. I'm sorry, the other way, $1.09 per month. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. And about $13 to, uh, to make up that hole for this year. The other portion uh, is a property tax increase. It's proposed of about a million dollars that would pay for additional personnel, equipment, and uh, support services for the additional offers, officers that the police chief proposed uh, last, I guess, couple of weeks ago. So if there are any questions about that, I'd be happy to entertain them. Uh, we do feel like this is a, an appropriate budget to use the city's finite resources. Um, as you know, you've been involved for a number of works and weeks, number of months in this, 
and uh, it, uh, it represents a way to continue to provide services and actually provide an increase in services for the police department. Any questions from the council? Okay. Then, uh, with that introduction, we'll open the public hearing portion of this uh, regarding the budget. So, is there anyone here who would like to speak to this? Yes. We got a couple of them coming. So. I just got my, recently my notice from the county, and it shows 13 owners of my house. <laughs> Uh, we kind of snicker at that, but when you stop and think about it, Tom, if I don't pay my property taxes, what happens to my home? You mentioned it earlier to me already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gets sold and I lose it, so right. I have 13 owners of, of my home. Six of them are asking for increases this year. Six of those 13 owners. So. It, uh, it makes it kind of tough. We think, well, one entity, but then we have to factor in all these other owners that want a piece of the pie, too. So I would just, that would be my concern, is that, uh, you know, we need to fund the services. Those are important. Uh, we heard that earlier in the other discussions today about ordinance enforcement, things like that, and all of those are important. But just the fact that we need to remember that we're not the only one that's owners that want a piece of the, of the pie here. So, and that's all that I had, all that I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Hi, I'm Robert Erickson, and I live in Chesterfield. Actually, I live next door to Mr. Sanders. Um, I don't want to go on too much about this. I am totally for getting the money for the police department and the fire department who, by the way, I called them the other day because somebody across the street filled my house full of smoke. If I have to pay an extra 10 bucks a year or whatever it is to call the fire department, I'd be happy to. And I'll pay John Sanders $10 a year as well. So the other stuff, I don't understand too much, but 13 bucks doesn't sound too bad, so I'm for it. Thank you. Yes, come forward. Are you getting names? Are you okay? I'm Steve Acey. Last year I sat through the same meeting. Last year my property tax went up $54. And the thing that they said is it's going to increase, it's going to do the public safety, it's going to hire more police officers. Well, that little paper we get from the West Valley, I didn't see that one, one officer was hired. Now, something's wrong. The money went somewhere. Uh, the roads are terrible. Uh, Last year you asked for a pay raise. This year you're asking a tax increase. Being on Social Security, three years has not, we have not received the cost of living allowance. So there are many in this city that's in the same boat. It's living on a fixed income. If we don't get an increase in our Social Security or any other government retirement. So that means that I have to give something up in my budget to pay this additional tax. Something that I would use somewhere else. Now, there's other things I'd like to talk about, but maybe I better not. We have elected mayor, and we have a city manager that is not really accountable to the people. And this, this is one of my peeves, that we have a mayor that's limited or whatever, and uh, we have the city manager that, that manages the city. That's, I don't know, some, some of the things I see in the city, it goes along that I think that the city council needs to take a, take a better look at what goes on. 
I don't know if they rubber stamp what what has been said or what or they go along with it. But I know there's some sitting on the council that's running for mayor that voted for tax increase last year. And I know there's some that didn't vote for the tax increase. So I, I I'm I'm saying that those on fixed income have to come up with extra money without extra income. That's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. My name is Mari Galloway. I live at 5676 West, 3647. And I'm frustrated over the tax, the, the property tax that I received. Last year it was raised $300. This year, and that was up to $1,780. Now this year they want $1,907. And I'm really frustrated because I'm in a blighted area now because of Mountain View Corridor. They came in and took out 100 homes in my area. And it is very blighted now because the trees are dying, the grass is tall, somebody's coming in there and cutting it every once in a while. But should they raise taxes on us, people that have been blighted because of this? And I'm representing about five blocks of the people out in my area. Um, I am appreciative of the police and fire and all of these other things. And I'm appreciative to you gentlemen and, and you sister that do work in our behalf. But I am coming here because I am contesting the high property tax for our blighted area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. I'm Nisha Christensen, 4196 South 4000 West. We have our own home and then we have a rental property. Last year, no, two years ago, we paid $838 in property taxes. Last year, after calling the county repeatedly and saying, I'm sure you've made a mistake, I'm sure you've made a mistake, they did indeed acknowledge the mistake and they doubled our property taxes. Um, I am not complaining. We did the same thing with our rental property. I am not complaining. West Valley City has asked for $12 on an average home for taxes. That's a dollar a month. I can live with that. I can't imagine what I would buy for that dollar that I couldn't afford to pay property taxes for. By the same token, there's that judgment. I can't imagine what I would do. It's not our fault that the judgment was given. It was, it was a long time ago, and who knew what was happening at that time. But what is our fault is if we try to lump all of our tax increase to West Valley City. It's not. As you has has been explained, Jordan School District or Jordan Granite School District has asked for a significant amount of money, but they're not the only ones. Others have too. West Valley City has asked for a very small amount, two dollars a month, maybe two and a quarter. Now, where for two and a quarter, I might be able to buy a gallon of milk at Costco uh, in a month, but that's not enough to justify not passing this tax increase. Thanks. Thank you. Is that everyone? If that's everyone, then we will close the public hearing portion of this discussion on uh, the budget and we'll now turn to considering resolution 17-128 to the council. Or not? Yeah, I, I have a comment about the uh, adjustment levy that there um, with our city manager. Did we talk to the county and and how we worked it out with the county? Yes, thanks, sir. So we had two um, conversations with the county. If I if I can kind of separate them that way. One was we actually were given notice by the county mayor's office as early as, uh, I believe it was in February or March, that this settlement with the largest uh, appellant to their property taxes, ATK, had made, and this goes back over this 20-year period that Mr. Welch referred to, was going to hit us, and it was going to be, they told us at the time, about $1.9 million. 
Mm -hmm. And so with that time and that warning, we went and we looked for ways to be able to absorb that within the budget without having to ask for even the increase at the judgment levy level, which you know from a year to year basis is we usually do ask for and it's usually way smaller, much more small uh, adjustment. So we were able to do that and uh, I believe it was Mr. Welch or some one of the council members mentioned that we did absorb that and figure out how to handle that within the existing budget. Then in June, we got a letter from the state treasurer's office with our certified tax rate, which we normally get about that time, and also the surprise news that it wasn't $1.9 million, it was $2.7 million on the judgment levy. At that point, we already had a tentative uh, budget under consideration uh, and approved by the council and really had no way to respond to and make up that $800,000 unless the council directs us to do it in another uh, fashion, which we don't recommend, haven't proposed. So between those two uh, conversations with the county, um, that's what determined what the amount was. We also had further conversation with the county to try and figure out where, how, who, and uh, you know, basically the, the explanation of why was the levy so big, who were the appellants that succeeded, what were the conditions around those, and that sort of thing. And we got most of that answer. There were a number of um, appellants, as uh, Mr. Welch mentioned, ATK was the biggest, but there were a number of other ones as well. They it might also be worth mentioning just from a general knowledge and background standpoint for the public that, like I said, we usually have a judgment levy assessment year to year, but it's usually more in the neighborhood of about eighty to a hundred thousand dollars, not two point seven million. So that was obviously something of a surprise. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment along those same lines uh, to those who are here and those who may listen. Uh, this was brought up in our strategic planning meeting at the first of the year that there was this huge uh, judgment levy we were facing. Now, all the years that I've been on the council, we have always opened or had a truth in taxation hearing like this for the purpose of recapturing the judgment levy. And it has always been small and it's always passed um, probably unanimously because it was a matter of not raising anybody's taxes but recouping and, and coming back to the budget that we had already approved and the tax level that we had already approved. And when we heard this uh, large judgment levy was coming down the pike to us, the discussion involved such ideas as, well, maybe we can try to get the county to pay it since it was their mistake 20 years ago in the first place. So maybe we can uh, cut budgets so that we can absorb it without doing what we usually do, which is to recapture it through the judgment levy, through this process. And the decision was <coughs> made, the direction was given to try to, even though we always do it, to try to see if we could work around it. And, and staff did that. And when it came in then at 2.7 million, we've already cut and reduced and I mean that we we're able to uh, pay a 2.7 million dollar bill with eight hundred thousand dollars I think is pretty remarkable and a credit to our good staff and finance department and all those who um, take seriously our reluctance to impose that on our residents and uh, all at once. And yet, uh, we're eight hundred thousand dollars short, which is just over a dollar a month on the average household. I'd like to make a comment, too, Mayor. Uh, when you get your tax notice from the county auditor, there's also a valuation on the bottom of that, and. I do own two properties in the city. Both of my properties valuation went up over $30,000 this year. Even though we haven't done a whole lot of improvement on either one of them, we basically maintained what we had. Each valuation went up $30,000. So with that, my taxes go up because that raises the taxable value also. So look at that too, and, and I, I agree. If, if they're doing something in the blighted area where your valuation goes up, then you need to talk to the county auditor and see what's going on here. Thank you. 
No, my my valuation went up. Asset, my assessed full market value went up thirty thousand dollars. So therefore, my taxable value also went up, and that raises taxes also. How much you pay? Okay. They base that now, rate on. We really ought to clarify that for for you. State law says that whatever the valuations are, the city cannot collect one dollar more because values went up. Okay, that's state law. So what we have to do is when values go up, you change the rates. Problem is not everyone's go up the same. So even though those values may go up thirty thousand dollars, you might end up with a tax decrease because others may have gone up more. So just remember that overall, and that's the thing with the judgment levy, it just rate changes the rate because by state law, for the same homes, you know, the how many homes do we have? 40,000, some 42,000. We, those 42,000 homes, we get to collect the same amount of property tax. And it doesn't matter if their values change, we have to change the rate until we get back to that. The county helps us with that. Now, we do get growth on that, but uh, uh, then when you add the tax on that, that's to prevent <laughs> the city from uh, reaping a windfall profit because values go up. So, I just want to make that clear so that people didn't think that uh, <laughs> somehow just by the values going up you pay more. An individual home may pay more, but overall it's the same. Unless they raise the tax. Then it goes up. Which the school district's doing, the county's doing, uh, I mean, a bunch of Okay. There were, there were a lot of people, a lot of different districts that were affected by the same tax short, shortage as we are. And that's why we're raising ours, is to come back up to that. They were affected by the same Hercules and everything else. So. Yeah. Kind of that still equalizing the balance across. Yeah, if you, if, as you say, if you add back in the 800000 the city would not be receiving more revenue. They would be maintaining their current revenue. Appropriate clarifications, so... Anyone? Move to approve resolution 17-128. Approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Must be getting late. <laughs> no further discussion to our city recorder for the roll call vote. Councilman Rundbelt? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Mayor Bigelow? No. Motion passes by majority. Okay, that takes care of that. Our next item on the agenda is resolution 17 124. Oh, excuse me, what did I say? Yes. Item number 9, resolution 17 29. Okay, this is a cooperative agreement with. Uh, the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, where they do the wildlife management. That's more specific. Uh, we already provide some in-kind services. Wildfire management. What, what did I say? Wildlife. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to go home and go to bed. So. Anyway, yeah, help me watch those. So, uh, Wildfire, that's the one. So we, the fire department provides some in-kind training and that, and in return for that training that they provide, which we are essentially already doing, in return, they promise that they will provide state support if there is a wildfire that affects our city. It's a five-year agreement. Seems to be fairly routine, fairly good thing for us to do. Certainly the fire department's on board. That's the issue before us. $22,000 of in-kind services. Great deal. 
to the council. May I move for approval of resolution 17-129. Second. Property before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Link? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfelt? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have resolution 17-30. Uh, uh, this is an exhibition agreement we will have at the uh, a group that will bring in, it says World Golf Hall of Fame and Museum, but it's really a Bob Polk uh, exhibit. And for $5,000, which is a, a great, great deal, we will be able to display that exhibit here in West Valley City. It's not been in the Inner Mountain West before, Normally, it is many times that cost to have this exhibit transported here and displayed. And so it is a very nice thing to have. Uh, and the issue for us is to approve this agreement, it has to be an agreement in writing. And so that's the issue to the council. We can ask que or answer questions afterwards. May I move for approval of resolution 17-130? Second, then if I had my putter with me, I'd be resting my arm on it. Property before us, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, to the city recorder for the vote. Councilman Arbel? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Ling? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have resolution 17 131. This is to approve an agreement between ourselves and Rocky Mountain Power Pacific Corp, excuse me, uh, the new name. Uh, Utah Power and Light. <laughs> we actually have a Scottish new, Power. Yeah. Uh, oh, it is getting really late. Uh, we actually use at the golf course about two, a little over two acres of property that belongs to them. Uh, and in the past, that was done without any agreement. They have determined that they want an agreement and they want some funds, but they don't do a part of a parcel, so it's 22 acres. Uh, however, they did, from their first request, negotiate that down to $6,163. And so this agreement will put that in place so it's clear that we are allowed to use that. As we get further advanced along, Everyone wants a contract and clarification, and so this will do it. And uh, that's the issue before us to the council. I move for approval of resolution 17-131. Second. Properly before us, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll turn to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Arville? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Lang? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That completes our regularly scheduled agenda. Any final comments from the council? Motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no.